Good morning, everyone. It's the start of another day. Yeah, another day in paradise, ready for our next adventure. We're heading to the island of Malpiti, 45 nautical miles. And that's just one of the stops on the way to the Cook Islands. We're now leaving the barrier reef. To the left, the waves are crashing. We are currently in the channel. To our right, another barrier reef. This exit is called the Pai Pai Channel. So way over there is Rayatia, and if you look over here, it's Bora Bora. But we're heading to Maupiti. Whoa! Uh, Maupiti is quite a tall island like Bora Bora, maybe a bit smaller, but still very high. I thought it was an atoll flat inside, like just a flat village in the middle but there's an actual high mountain. Awesome, I like it. This is a magnificent tall island and we're heading straight there now. It's not clear exactly where the entrance is, but I can see the waves breaking over there. You probably can't see it on camera. Basically where the waves break, that's probably where the entrance is. It's very unclear how to get in here. We'll get closer and take a look because there are no proper maps, but I think there should be a way in. I checked the depths. Everything's okay, but it's a very narrow passage, only about 100 meters wide. Well, we'll figure it out. There is no gap. There's a gap, and they say it's pretty tricky to enter here. We're going to try to enter now because the waves are huge, really huge, and the passage is very narrow. When you look at how these waves are moving, I'll get closer and show you. Straight ahead to the sides, everywhere, these waves are all around. We're going to follow the map now, and our entry point is here. We'll move slightly to the right to follow this pink line. Hey, look here. Yes, I see, yes. It is just terrible. Well, here we are passing the buoy. It's quite narrow here, of course. So, darling? This is fucked up. Jim, Jim. Ha ha, it is a nightmare. Listen, we were moving at a speed of 1.4 knots with 2.5 thousand RPM, 1.8 knots, meaning we entered at a speed of 5.6. And it seemed like a high speed 
No, well, you see, it was still a little ebbing. Well, not just barely, but quite a bit. I think a couple more hours and the rain would have poured. It was written at five. Well, at five, it'll still be pouring, probably after five, too. Look at those brave guys. Well, these ones on the power bot, they are just driving. It's very hard to go now. First of all, it's shallow, six meters beneath us. And now this whole water area, which will be, it's all so shallow. And sometimes there are these shelves, three meters, two and a half meters, two and a half meters. And you're kind of looking where to go to avoid the shallow part. Here it's three meters. Here it's four meters. I'm going around like this to avoid the really shallow part. Oh, people are swimming. And uh, here, as I understand, do all the locals live? Look, there's some kids swimming over there. At least here there are good lateral shoes. There's plenty of them. And you can see where to go. But still, it's kind of creepy here. Because even in the middle of the channel, there are very shallow parts. There's a little boat on the left. I think we should go where the boat is needed. There's a guidebook there. Anyway, it's super beautiful here. Such a blue water in front like this. Rocks sticking up into the sky. Such a tall island magnificent. It's been here for a long time and no one's been sailing. There's a beautiful sandbank over there. A sandy spit. We can drive everywhere here. 10 meters. Well, I think, give or take. Amazing place. So, checking to make sure there's no sensor here. Or here we are. Mo Piti, 10 meters deep. We are standing perfectly. Okay, we're anchored at this wonderful place. It's really, really beautiful here. At least I like it. Take a look. Uh, anchoring, uh, there's another boat here. That's the entrance. That's the way out. Some shallows. Uh, sandbanks that we should definitely visit. And here rises such a magnificent mountain. And all this is an inner lagoon. And it's smooth, beautiful. And the coolest thing is that we'll have a sunset view from the cockpits. So friends, a magnificent place. That's why we're opening a can of beer now and having a pre-sunset drink. Now it's just after five. And at six by 5.45, we'll have a sunset. So let's enjoy the beauty. And tomorrow we'll show you everything. We want to stay here on this little island for a while since there's no wind. To go further, we'll wait for the weather. Are you happy? Very much. Three yeah, I really Three want to. Small. The penguins yeah. are dancing. Three the white sand is everywhere. And That's squishy. aggressive, man. Ouch, I fell asleep, darn. There's Bavaria 46 standing over there. Oh, we told them, guys, here's the internet we have. We set it up here, aimed it in their direction. If it reaches, have fun.
So we are going to call this part of our video the disappointment dive because it's really simple. Every neighbor and everyone we've talked to before said that Maupiti is such an amazing place where you can dive with mantas. This buoy we have taken and arrived at is exactly the spot where you can often find mantas. There are these big rays that can be about uh, four meters in size and we really wanted to see them because I saw them once on Bora Bora on a previous uh, around the world trip. I don't know if Dina has seen them, but I think she'd really love to. So uh, here we are at the spot. To our great disappointment, despite all assurances that mantas are plentiful here, we didn't see a single one, unfortunately. We've uh, visited this spot three or four times and even the folks who came by when we shared Wi-Fi with them said uh, uh, yeah we've we've dived here and just uh, saw those mantas but uh, when we dived we didn't see a single one and uh, we've been here several times and never saw any so we decided not to waste any more time and by the way if you don't know how to dive in risky places especially if you have a limited number of people then you don't necessarily need a support dinghy following you you can just take it and tie yourself to it and drift with it out, let's say, at the exit of the atoll. That's what they advised us on Tuamotu and we adopted this practice. So we decided to go and check out the sharks, uh, which uh, are usually always present at the exit from the atoll. But here the diving was such a fail because there were neither mantas at the spot we liked, nor any sharks, nor anything interesting to see underwater. Unfortunately, we didn't find anything here. So uh, we just marked it off the list that we've done it here on Maupiti. Look to the side. Have a mission we're heading to that island to see what's interesting there he also refuses there keep doing it what am I doing There is a strong current here. Wow, the current. There are guys on a boat there too, some locals. Just throw it further away, that's it. I heard you, yes.
It's really beautiful here, wild nature. I just flew over those huge waves. So far, I like everything. Oh, there's a dead shark hanging on a stick. Let's go, I'll show you. It's a black tip shark. All right, let's go into the bushes. Let's see what's here. Oh, cool. The palm trees are so dry. Look. It's like a jungle jungle. Robinson's hut. Free accommodation, come in, whoever wants. Live as you like. There's no poisonous snakes on these islands, or at least I sincerely hope so, because there shouldn't be any here. Look at those palm trees. So layered. This side, as you understand, faces the sunset. A beautiful place, but walking here is really tough because of the sharp rocks. Uh, crocs are perfect for this. Uh, wow, there's actually something like that here, a bar. Well, it's obviously closed, but nevertheless, there used to be a bar here. That's a really silly crab. Look, it has a hole in its shell, and you can see its body through it, so basically any beak could poke in, and that's it. Goodbye. Silly crab. Wow. Wow, claw. The size of the burrow is like a head. Okay, stepping outside. 
Oh, really important point. There are trash cans for general waste and recycling. It's actually quite a big issue here, just so you know. That's a, a phone booth, dead end street. So we're living in a cul-de-sac here. Got it. Let's see what's for sale in this charming little village. Rock in the sky. Look how clean it is here. There's nothing lying around. All the parts, all the lawns, they're all swept. Not a single leaf, nothing. It's really rare when places like this are usually quite messy. But here it's spotless. And this is how the locals live. Yes, it's an abandoned home. But it doesn't look too different from an inhabited one. Wow, the mangoes here are amazing. Totally perfect. I think we will come here. Look, totally. Let's eat. Tasty. Yeah, many people have beautiful gardens full of plants. Wash your hands after that mango. Got dirty? Well, that's just terrible. I didn't deny yourself anything. Did you deny yourself nothing? Mm. I wonder if there's a drop to the water here now. It's not a pier, I see. Maybe it's just a small dip to the water? There's a step there. And the water is totally turquoise. Here they traditionally keep boats so they don't get overgrown. I showed you these wheels before, where they lift them all up. Everyone here is like that. Look at this thing. There's a watering hole here. Apparently, initially, if you wanted to buy water, you had to swipe a card and enter a code. But now it seems they've made the water public. Check it out, it's solar powered, such a beautiful house, flowers that match the house. As I understand there's a school here, a church. The largest building? Well, Catholic. And funny enough, look, a church with an anchor just for sailors, for marineros only. Look, a garden is growing here too. It will grow and then everything will be shady. These will be big trees. <laughs> and here we already have some. Listen, this is great. It's probably the biggest building here in town. Because it seems like there's a police station, city hall, hospital. And the fire department is up front here. Everything's here. Air Tahiti. By the way, there's an airport here. But it's on a separate island. Well, it's kind of across the road 
you have to take a boat to pick it up. By the way, here's a place called Bubul, a store. Let's go in. Let's check out what kind of store it is, if it's magnificent. The store is probably closed. It is until 12 and then... From 16 to 17.30. So we do want it here. There is nobody there. So the island is kind of a place forgotten by God, but really tidy and well kept. I don't know, there's not much to do there. Maybe just uh, drive to look around or stop by an ATM. But that's probably it. Maybe you can buy some basic supplies. I even saw some kind of beer stand where you can get a drink, but it's all very basic, nothing special. You can even rent a bike and ride around the island, I think. We walked about a third of the island in about half an hour. It's a third of the island on foot, so I don't think it's the best entertainment. That's why I think it's not the most exciting place. We've just arrived at the point near the exit. The exit from the atoll, or if you prefer, the entrance, depending on what you like more. And this is our magnificent mountain. There's, there's something burning on it. Oh, what a cool tree. This is not a tree. It's a plant parasite wrapped around it. You can barely see the tree. Yeah, cool. Dina is anchoring there with all her strength. Overall, it's really beautiful here. It's fun to fly a drone and uh, just spend time at the beach. Um, where else would you spend it? I don't know, it's nice here. Cool, especially on the little beach. Let's check what's there. Where? Let's go. What are these gazebos? Strange, maybe they're there, those things, like cushions kind of. shed for storing piles. They look like these ones. Yeah, yeah, put, put the futons there. Yeah. Coconuts everywhere. Coconuts here and in front uh, a little stand. They chop them, uh, remove the copra and let it dry. Looks like there used to be some kind of resort here. So there is even a barbecue barbecue we can come here and grill sausages we've run out of sausages so you'll have to catch a fish yeah <laughs> no look over there is clearly a spot for fishing fishermen hang out there every day well maybe it's worth a try fed up with this little beach. It's beautiful, I like it. And the current is nice, and the mountain is magnificent, but I think that's enough for today.
heading up the mountain. It's about an hour and a half one way. 1.5 for two. There are two and a half, three on both sides. So I think it's about an hour and a half. So we'll see. Even if you're in a hurry, it should be okay. Uh, we'll see, it's hot. The path starts like that. Nothing special until we start climbing uphill. But we saw that we'll even have to climb with ropes. Climb up. Let's go up the slope. I was hoping the whole way up would be just a bit of a descent and easy to walk. So that's it. taking a small break. It's hard to walk, it's hot, aren't you tired? Uh, a little bit, not much, it's ready now. Did you rest? Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Apparently people were so tired they sat here and finished this structure in three hours. Installation? place enough. Let's head down. Not the other side to hold it. Well, it's at least picturesque here. Well, go on, run! We've finished the difficult part of the path. 
and now it's easier, smoother, and it'll go all the way down to the village. When we were going up, we missed this viewing platform. The boats are down there. Beautiful. Here we are out of this thicket and now our path is smooth. Quite big. Look how many containers he brought. This is the Maupiti City Pier. On the water side there is a church, there is a police station there. And this is the pier we're heading to now. By the way, it looks quite civilized, I see. Here at the post office, this is how it looks. Concrete benches. Good benches. ATM. Oh, which is nicer. Yes, these little postal boxes. They're loading them now. There's a sound like that. Here is this No. Well, it is mandatory. After all, these are French overseas territories. So Euro surprises aren't even surprising. And now we're going to the store. We withdrew $100. Now I'll show you what they look like here. Just like that. Also 10,000 French francs. French Polynesian, like That's this. Beautiful. Yes, 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 Polynesian. With Polynesian images is completely new like this. All printed with a Just like an ATM prints money. There's a little printing machine inside that once you enter your pin code, it goes pew and instantly it prints fresh like bills in on some high quality paper. So we're rich people now. We can afford to buy. How much can we buy? For example, we can get some beer. Let's find four out packs. now. Four packs of beer. No, I think it's five here. Now we'll find anyway, out. Anyway, that's not the point. We are out of rums. water and milk because we plan to be at Cook Island already. But since this place is just so fantastic, we decided Punta Ose Kun. Well, the day after tomorrow, we'll head to the next auto, 100 miles to Arona. And while we wait with no wind, we're not suffering, not suffering at... Yes, look here, everything is being cleaned up all over the city. Wow, a gym. Here you see a garage of theirs, no roof. It's possible to, to work out here in the shade. Yes. This is how they bury people, graves. Yes, there's a cemetery right in the yards. We came to another store and it looks like this. This is how the store looks. We're filming through a closed fence. So, um, besides the beer stand, like I said, you can't buy anything here. And look, as I was saying, the entire yard is completely a burial ground. Here instead of the whole yard. So basically, it's a sad story here. There's nothing from the provisions to buy. In this store we stopped into before, we decided to buy some water. I they didn't have water powder. or milk, have just milk. powdered milk. We have it just in case when you were buying. Anyway, we've got a pack of powdered milk on the boat. There's just that. No regular liquid milk and Tina decided to buy this frozen pea for $15 for a pack. Honestly, I don't know what they eat here. Of course, for 15 bucks, peas! I don't know, I can catch some fish for you for $15. Better eat fish. 
it, it is good that I'm quick and stocked up on various canned goods while we were in Tahiti. Basically, we have a very large strategic reserve of all sorts of canned goods. I think it should last us for about a month. And this is still French Outremer here. But what are we going to spread the pâté on? We will spread pâté on tuna. Le Rock. What is here? They're buying canned goods like corn, peas, and so on. Better show what we bought. It's more water. We paid somewhere around a dollar per bottle for 12 bottles. Thanks How a lot. Many are there? Here are these 50 12 bottles. We paid about a dollar per bottle. Thanks a lot. And these are $50 bills. Well, here's how it's. Uh, and so we have three packs of beer. We were unlucky with the milk. Fortunately, we still have three small packs of cream. There is cream. Yes. Maybe we'll, we'll stop by another kiosk at the beginning. See if they have some. This is what their school bus looks like. And here comes their Yoja. Dingo. We're going to the far part of the island, but not all the way to the end. So now we're heading to... Oops, Dina just jumped in. Anyway, there's an island for us, kind of round. There's this corner, that second corner, and the third corner. We're going there now. Look behind me, there's a, a magnificent lagoon. It's enormous, several kilometers long with this blue water and it's probably about half a meter to a meter deep and we're navigating around these rocks lying here. We are going around the corral. There are really many of them here. We are bypassing. It's really shallow here, most of this area is not passable, uh, I think, but uh, over there, there's a chance. Dina's running there and you're in flip-flops, right? I wouldn't go barefoot. And here is a beach like this. It, it stretches several kilometers in length. This is the furthest part of the island. Yes, what a magnificent beach. There's no one here, it's just wild.
look at this amazing location. There's such a deep, deep trench. Look, nature has carved it out just like that. Probably there's a current passing through here. Cool! We've now reached the furthest part of the island. This is the outer edge. This is the corner. So, guys want to have a laugh? Oh, we're not on the right bike. Oh, we plan to go to the big and main island, just to the edge. Mm, we ended up on another one. Look, we were supposed to be next to the little restaurant sign, but we landed more to the left. It's beautiful here too, but we'll go there later. Now it's time to try some tasty mangoes. It's nobody's. This one, by the way, should be thrown out or just eaten quickly now. But these don't interest me. We ate them outside. They were delicious. But these ones are magnificent. I think these will be the tastiest mangoes. Your guess? No, wild ones? Wild ones. Anyway, here it is, the moment of truth. Usually the small mangoes are the sweetest, the tastiest, just absolutely amazing mangoes. The big ones are ordinary, but the small ones are the best. I'm cutting two mangoes, so we have a choice, just in case one is bad, just a coincidence. So... Oh, censored. Alright, let's try the other one. Anyway, she was right. This is crab. It tastes like mothballs with lemon. I don't know what this is. Basically, this is super disgusting. It's going overboard because it's inedible. Ugh, it's gross. So, we just arrived at some public beach that's located... Uh, oh, look at that shell, it's so white. Anyway. On this beautiful place, on this island. There are small beaches and little palm trees. By the way, you can access this place with a car and people are chilling there. Honestly, I never get tired of palm trees and this kind of view. Mm, people ask me if I'm tired of it. How could you get tired of this? It's much worse sitting in some dirty city where it's winter. Disgusting. But here it's so beautiful. How could you get tired of this?
Every place a new discovery Dina, as usual, is out here searching for shells. Well, actually, that was the goal today on this amazing beach. Uh, but as you can see, I struck out with the seashells, and there's really nobody here. Just perfect 